Uh, page six of the Daily Nation, Uhuru Tour signals a new dawn. He will be launching the pilot program of the Universal Health Care uh, Initiative in Kisumu. But of course, a lot of political overtones being seen uh, in this visit uh, post the handshake with Raila Odinga. And uh, many wondering, what does this mean? Is this uh, an end to the rivalry? And uh, a lot of the misgivings that that part of the country had against the ruling government. Let me begin with you, uh, Honor Baraza. Yeah, I support the president's uh, tour of uh, Kisumu because that's a region that I was hard hit uh, by uh, electoral violence and the demonstrations and the re a lot of resisting. Uh, but I also want also to tell the president that uh, uh, Kenya is a big country, and uh, from Kisumu, you should draw a timetable of uh, doing similar to the rest uh, in the part of this country. Uh, because uh, uh, this country, we have a disease of uh, exclusivity in this country. Uh, that we only benefit if one of our own is sitting uh, in government. And uh, we we'll want the president to diffuse uh, such kind of notions that after visiting Kisumu, I want to see him in my constituency in the community in Pungoma. He should really move everywhere. He's the president of the people, and uh, time is not a limiting factor. He should create time for Kenyans. He should be launching all these projects uh, uh, throughout uh, various parts of, uh, of this country, not just Kisumu alone, because uh, this country is built on various aspects, not necessarily on handshake alone. And uh, Speaker Kagushi, I mean, some people are wondering, was the handshake not enough? Did he have to physically go and <laughs> do a Kisumu? Yeah, it's important to note that the president is going to Kisumu <coughs> to launch the universal health care. And uh, Kisumu was actually picked as a pilot county uh, because it is um, uh, quite prevalent on communicable diseases. Uh, Nyeri County also happens to have uh, benefited from this pilot uh, study. Uh, and uh, Nyeri County benefits because of uh, having the non-communicable diseases, the high burden. And uh, we also have uh, Isiolo County, also who is also on board, again because of the issue of uh, maternity problems that we have there. We have also Machakos on board. And uh, uh, probably <coughs> what then uh, we are looking at is what informed the president then to pick Isumu to be where he launches this program and not Nyeri, mm -hmm. not Isiolo, not, uh, uh, not Machakos. And, and, and so for that actually also answers some part of what Honorable Didma says, that the president actually need to also develop other parts of the country. So really that settles that issue. The, the Kisumu has not, been picked, has not actually been picked because of the handshake. It has been picked uh, because of a very good reason. Uh, nevertheless, the issue of um, handshake was very important. It came on 9th March this year. and. Uh, the, the, the president's visit to Nyanza has been awaited. And you remember that it has actually botched several times. I actually don't know whether it was botched or, or whether it was uh, you know, just canceled for whatever reasons. There's even a, a time that the president was supposed to visit uh, Nyanza together with the Tanzanian president and uh, Raila Odinga. Uh, but then uh, the choice of this time, uh, you know, during uh, festivities, and of course launching a very very important program by the government uh, to me is also very telling politically speaking uh, because uh, the, the issue of uh, building initiative seems to have taken root in the country the team has actually gone around the country collecting views from members of the public and and you you, you see at the point now when the pre president is coming to visit uh, kisumu is actually nine months after if he went immediately after, there would have been a lot of apprehension. But at this point now, the, the issue is actually settled in people's minds. And actually now people are starting to, to develop the 2022 narratives. And uh, uh, what I don't know how to interpret this is that uh, the president is going just a few weeks after the deputy had actually gone to Nyanza. I don't know whether the deputy had gone to Nyanza to prepare uh, for the president to go <coughs> or... Uh, the deputy president actually got to know the president is going and decided then to go ahead. So I, I really don't know what came first. But nevertheless, this is going to set a base for more political narratives, which are actually going to inform our going forward in 2019. Yesterday, uh, the senator Moy was awarded uh, by the president. And uh, 
you know, all, all these are things that if you piece one plus one, they, they, they will kind of inform what then becomes our political journey come 2019 as we go towards uh, 2020 as we go towards 2022. Right, and several opposition leaders were also uh, recognized in those awards yesterday. But this also, according to the nation, is the beginning of uh, reconciliation tours around the country. So, you know, going to areas that were perceived as opposition strongholds, the president is also trying to make overtures in those particular areas. But what do you make of this uh, visit to Kisumu, Senator? <laughs> Very positive. Eh? Reason being that uh, for the last two elections, we have seen Kenyans splitting almost into two uh, into two parts which is very dangerous we were almost becoming like a country that is called Czechoslovakia. you know Czechoslovakia is a country that was in the eastern europe uh, that is in eastern europe mm -hmm. and it was made by two parts slovakia and that and Czech republic and after sat after communism fell it split up uh, and therefore this notion where Kenyans were almost splitting to two, where government gets legitimacy in certain regions, in other regions, appears the government doesn't have a lot of legitimacy, it was very dangerous. So I think, personally, I strongly believe Uru Kenyatta is a political genius that was able to see a problem and is doing a lot of efforts towards ensuring that doesn't become embedded. And the, that explains the rationale of handshake. Mm -hmm. That is, you, you need to get those people to they come on board, so that now, as a president, your authority now can get legitimized in the entire country. And uh, in fact, from where I see it, that explains why there's even a constitutional push, because you need now to embed that notion, maybe in a constitutional framework. So that maybe even the person who is winning, I think the so-called article and that is about article four of the constitution, where you provide for a winner must get f at least fifty percent plus one, it appears not to be working. Either we can increase that threshold, or maybe we, we, we provide what is called a constitutional democracy. But I think we need to ensure every government that is ruling this country is very inclusive. It is it represents vast majority of Kenyans. Would Maybe that make room for what they call the ceremonial president? Uh, should that be? No, you know, it, it's a complex area <coughs> because Intel tells so many things. One, it, it, it's a complex area. Um, I, I don't want to say what you're saying is the real solution, no. There are several possible solutions to that. One would be where we move to what is called a constitutional democracy, which means, one, the winning entity is a grand coalition. Mm -hmm. That grand coalition is comprised of the so-called politically relevant ethnic groups. Uh, a good example is like in Northern Ireland, in a place called uh, Lebanon, in Belgium, in Switzerland, where the people who win, they tend to represent the face of the country. That's number one. Uh, but of course it has its own negatives, including the lack of an opposition. So Kenyans have to debate that. The other possible area is what is called centripetalism, which means that uh, uh, you, you, you craft an electoral system which tends to reward the people who are moderate, as opposed to the current system where the people who get the best rewards are the ethnic extremists. Right. So how do you do that one? You can consider bringing what is called alternative voting. You rank people. Where instead of voting for one person, you vote for several preferences. And that way you'll find, as a candidate, I'll be compelled to go to my enemies because I want them to give me, even if they won't give me the first vote, they can give me mm. the second vote. There are several constitutional engineering design systems which can address that problem. But the point which I'm trying to allude to is, I think Uhuru was trying to preempt a situation we can become a bipolar okay. state or a bipolar society where we have almost one half of the country voting this way or the other one looking at this way. That's something as a nation we must sit down and think about. And, and Dunstan, Raila has said that this meeting will be similar to the 1961 convention in Kisumu that brought together various heads of state and leaders from East and Central Africa. Will it have that same magnitude in your view? Well, the president has achieved a milestone and we must congratulate the president for have for having gone really back to accommodate everybody. Because the country, as it is structured, as my good friend says it, we have been suffering from the question of exclusivity and mm -hmm. inclusivity. But 
how long is the question. Two, if this thing is not managed very well, what is it likely to portend? The handshake. Raila said that uh, this is like a 1961 uh, agenda. I'm not pessimistic, but I'm asking the question. When I look at the political history of the Jaramogi family and now his son Raila Odinga, the Jomo Kenyatta family and now the president, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, it is a history of uh, convenience for a very short duration. And when that divorce comes, it becomes very disruptive mm -hmm. and very disruptive to this nation. Are we likely to see a disruption towards 2021, 2022? Can these lulls be sustained to 2023? That is the question. In 20, all elections are, elections worldwide is us versus them. It has never been us versus us. The 2022 scenario is now building to be us against us because everybody now is in government. Why do we get ourselves in this situation? If now Relodinga, uh, William Ruto, Gideon Moy, Kalonzo Musioka, uh, Moses Wetangula, uh, I saw uh, uh, Mudavadi at, Uhuru, at uh, the function yesterday. Everybody is now government. But come 2022, these are competitors. Everybody will be having an advantage to use state resources to campaign. Everybody will be that government. So who is really going to be on the ballot? And this is what I'm saying that we are seeing now, but we are not seeing that it can cause a massive disruption come 2022. Because everybody will be talking with full security of the state under him. Two, the political narrative, are politicians true to President Uhuru Kenyatta? For now, yes. The president is likely to start losing power, not as a head of state, but to attract politicians to his way starting 2021. He will not be in the ballot. Politicians will start looking at their interests of being re-elected. So they will start now again jostling for who is likely to form government. And that time, the president will be lonely and left alone. Mm -hmm. His legacy, if he has to achieve any meaningful development, in my own perspective, the president has only this year and next year. The succession politics of 2022, the president has tried as much as possible to keep it quiet. But the politicians, their business. Didmas here, Mwishimiwa Didmas here, as he sits here, he has put projections on how he'll start from a member of parliament from 2017 until he becomes the head of state of this nation. That is the trajectory of every politician. The ultimate goal. As I'm sitting here, probably I'm putting in place the structures on how he'll move from the lawyer to the chief justice. The apex. Is that selfish interest? that is being told, wait, going to wait for long. Mm -hmm. Israel Odinga, all of a sudden again forgetting that his position is, a, is, a, is the president of very many heads of state in terms of infrastructure in Africa. Now he has become again local. He has realized that was he duped to move out of the political terrain in Kenya and go to the political terrain in Gambia, Botswana, all over. And while that time, he's likely competitors are making mileage. So in my view, it is a very technical issue that we are dealing now that might cause a lot of disruptions. But for the sake of the Kenyans, we need that peace from 2018. We need that peace 2020. We need that peace in, towards the first half of 2021. Okay. So we need to achieve those dreams of the government at this time. The political terrain, I want to be very clear, is that the president is going to Luo Nyanza. He's not going to Nyanza. Kisi and Nyamira have formed part of 
Nyanza, which actually does not exist. Those counties are independent. They stand by themselves. The president is mm -hmm. going to Kisumu County, and on Friday he will be in Siaya County to deal with that. Are we going to see the president break the law by giving goodies that do not exist? Because we moved away from the old constitutional dispensation when people could go and ask for handouts. We need this road. Then we said parliament must budget for a particular road. Parliament must approve resources for everything. So are we now, because of this handshake, saying we now have brought that imperial presidency where when the executive lands anywhere, people are asking for what is not budgeted for. If that will be the, uh, the results and the fruits of the handshake, we will have totally made this country b go back a hundred years. So in your view, this Kisumu tour could be a short-sighted attempt of the president to further entrench his influence in the country? Yes, I had yesterday some people in Kisumu being saying that the people's president will be here and the mm -hmm. head of state of the country will be here. If that is not disabused that this country has only one head of state, there is nothing called a people's president. If that notion is not dealt with now, people might have a certain perception that uh, they have two presidents in this country, one for the people and one for the country. There is only one head of state who is going to every part of this country okay. and who cannot be restricted from going to any part of this nation. We need to wrap up. Any closing comments as we do? Yes, uh, in uh, less than a minute, I would want to tell the president of the Republic of Kenya that uh, he should fire cabinet secretaries uh, who are in charge of ministries that has experienced uh, loss of a lot of money through corruption and that uh, in this uh, spirit of uh, handshake, the president needs to listen most to uh, the people who are going to identify, to assist him identify areas of improvement as opposed to uh, just us in the royal crowd who are always clapping for him. Even if he's naked, they're saying, you are good to go, please soldier on. And I think it's in this spirit that parliament is, uh, was, was formed to really oversight the government and ensure that uh, uh, the government identify, uh, identifies areas that uh, really needs to improve for proper service. Okay, Speaker Kagusha. I, I would like to say that the president is uh, on the right track to ensure that the country is uh, brought together, that we have a, co a cohesive society in this country. And uh, I would also want to urge the president really to uh, reduce the size, help this country to reduce the size of executive and whatever savings we make from that reduction, they should be uh, taken back to a more deliberate, more uh, thought out plan to include the youths, the young people who are the majority in this country in terms of uh, getting into the mainstream development uh, strategy of our country. We can be able to bring down all these parastatos, uh, government companies, instead of adding them, we can be able to bring down these uh, commissions and all that and save billions of money, which then can go to the young people to help them with training and to help them with uh, getting uh, proper engagement, including the internship that the government had uh, earlier on thought about. And, and I think that way, as a country, we are going to have uh, a generation that is also more empowered, that is going to take this country to the next level in coming days. Senator. Mr. Abdi Kadir was the chairman of a certain task force that was looking at the state parastatus and, uh, and, and whether we need all those that we have. So far, we are, I think we have about 360 something. I was a member of the PIC, so I know. And I agree with my friend Kagushi that uh, one way of fighting corruption is to reduce the size of government mm -hmm. because it's only through government system, a huge bureaucracy, that uh, people do corruption. So the way once you reduce the number of state corporations, then corruption will uh, proportionately go down. So therefore, I would strongly urge government to consider implementing that uh, report. And also, most importantly, some of those parastatos have been uh, rendered superfluous by the new constitution. Take like the so-called regional development authorities. Oh, I don't see the rationale of such entities. Because now we have counties, they are the focus of the development. And finally, as the president to us, uh, those region, we invite him to Muranga County because, uh, <laughs> yes, he, as he goes to look for uh, those 
other people which in my view is a very important thing i think i must also not forget those of us who come from um, regions that have been very supportive of him we have also our own issues including uh, fluctuating prices of tea uh, the problem of coffee prices they have a lack of a very good, a very good and stable market for our, our avocado products. So I think we still believe that uh, he should come to Moranga County and see what areas he can intervene and Moranga County grows be in a better manner. Okay, then send you can take us home. I can also, if you have a, you have a county, you have a home. Yes, I sir. also come from Yamira County and now that my politicians <laughs> have not invited <laughs> the president to come to Yamira, not that I have any political interest, <laughs> Kisumu is just near to Nyamira. Uh, on behalf of my people, I don't represent them by elections, but by virtue of being born in that place, the president should visit everybody in Nyamira. It will only take him five minutes with a military chopper to land at Nyamira and see the issues of tea bonuses. Moranga and Nyamira, we share a lot of tea issues. That should be an issue. But the biggest issue is what the speaker said. This country and where I come from and everywhere, the question of the youth. Unemployment of the youth. This is a time bomb. Unless we generate enough jobs for the youth, this nation is likely to collapse. I totally support the president's agenda. I totally endorse what the president and the deputy are doing. But I'm only in, is saying, let us have more youths in leadership. And let the youths not be dismissed to be very poor, to be very corrupt. Let us give them chance to learn, to run this country. The future of this nation lies on the youth, and also the future of this nation lies on the gender called the women. We have not addressed women issues as much as we are addressing other issues. Moeshimiwas, you did a very bad job. You fail to pass the gender bill, and still that is a serious issue, is a serious indictment. You call it deferral. Let us look at development holistically, not from a paternalistic no, point of view. Can I ask uh, a question? Yes. Really no, quickly you, as we yeah, wrap up. No, look here. This guy was the other day so saying uh, parliament is bloated. Eh? You, you need also to... Uh, oh, so if we incorporate women, it will further that no, tweet. I, no, I, I didn't say that. Eh, but he needs, you know, you say parliament is blotted in one way. Then when we, those of us in government who are pushing for but increment... He's also becoming a politician. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am not.